And welcome to Healing X Outreach Radio. I am your host, Augustin Nastasio, and uh, uh, last week we had a retelecast of Daniel and Sheridan Ward, and uh, Daniel giving his testimony. Uh, he's a former Bethelite, and you can check that uh, that uh, retelecast out in the archives or any of our other programs at uh, www.blogtalkradio.com backslash healing, the letter X, and outreach. That's healing X outreach. Not EX, just the letter X, as in Malcolm X. Um, We're also on iTunes. So if you uh, are a frequent uh, listener of uh, many musical tastes or programs or podcasts on iTunes, Check us up on iTunes and or subscribe to us on our archives page, and we will send you an email notification for all of our programs that come here on Healing X Outreach. We are a network of uh, several other programs. On Tuesdays, we have uh, Ray Aldridge and Christian Corner, which he uh, hails from the United Kingdom, and uh, normally his program comes on on 5:30 on Tuesdays. On the opposing Tuesdays, Melissa Bramer comes on with Hurting the Healing and she normally comes out on 7.30 p.m. That's Eastern Time, 5.30 and 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, we normally air at 12 p.m. Eastern Time, but uh, starting on December, I believe, 26th, the day after Christmas, we will be airing mostly at 1 p.m., and there's a reason for that. Uh, you've heard me uh, give a program on accountability and, and, and uh, talk about Rick Farron and Six Screens Network. Well, uh, we're going to be working collaboratively with Cult Free Network and Six Screens Network and with a fishnet operation of reaching out to more Jehovah's Witnesses. And there are reasons for that, and I will explain that on the December 26th program and uh, how I have to really pretty much eat for a little bit on, the, on what I had said about accountability, um, and I will explain in full detail then. And we will also discuss the Christmas season and any of your uh, uh, you know, Jehovah Witness Christmas myths or propaganda that you want to share or, or need dispelling, we will talk in detail. We will talk about the birth date of Christ coming not from paganism. We will talk about many, many other things that are actually have their own original uh, creation apart from any idea of uh, pagan deities or whatnot. And we will talk a little bit about syncretism and contextualizing the gospel in that program on the 26th. And also, um, we will uh, you will be able to see me from now on. I will be on a uh, uh, a video chat, I think Rick has set up. And so um, you will be able to see me as I normally host. We will still have this uh, line, the 347, for those who want to call that line. And we will also... Uh, tie it in in a three-way with another toll-free hotline, um, which will be done through, I think, uh, Joshua's going to help me out with that, uh, David King, Joshua, who runs the Cult Free Network. And um, we're going to go ahead and um, uh, have a, a, a three-way line and a video suite so that we will be able to be heard by a broader uh, group of listeners. Um uh, today's guest, and uh, and next week, just to share with you, next week's programming will be, I believe. Hold on, let me take a take a quick look because I think it is on. Um, I think it's a, well. Next week's program, to to be clear, is a debate. And to let you know, it's going to be a a Catholic Protestant debate on salvation by faith or works, and so that should be really really interesting. And uh, it will be William Albridge and Turretin Fan. And I can tell you right now, the debate is going to be at 2 p.m., 2 p.m. next Saturday. So that will be a two-hour debate. It's called the Justification Debate. And uh, I will say normally I do side with William on some of his debates, but this will be one I will definitely be siding with Turretin Fan. Me being, of course, uh, of the reform persuasion. Um, and so next week we will have a debate, and that will be from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. That's Eastern time. And uh, and we will be advertising that uh, later on on Facebook. And also you can check it out in our archives. Today's guest, though, we have a, a, a an old friend of mine. We had him on a couple of years ago. And uh, I don't know... Uh, 
Bruce, if you're on, just press one so that I can see your number there uh, light up so that I can unmute you. Uh, we have Dr. Bruce Carter, and we're going to, that's him, there you go. And we're going to be talking about Watchtower Christology and the worship of Jesus. And, and Bruce, uh, just uh, uh, if you could just let your, your audience know where you got your Ph.D. from and what was your uh, the, the paper's main thesis on? Well, my major thesis, and, and, and good morning or good afternoon, whichever you want to prefer there, my brother in Christ. How you doing? I'm doing great, brother. Okay. Uh, the, my major thesis was uh, the uh, the deity of Christ. And uh, was he to be worshipped or reverentially, I can hardly say that word sometime, respected? And uh, I I wrote about a 100-page article or dissertation on it, and I received my degree from um, the University of Indiana. So uh, I praise God for that, and uh, here I am. That is great, great. So yeah, that, that I mean, this is a this is a really interesting topic, especially since Christmas is around the corner, and uh, and uh, just to uh, to let uh, our listeners know, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses hold what we call the Unitarian position. And mm-hmm. The Unitarian position is varied, but there, there are Unitarians that believe Jesus was just a man, and there are Unitarians that believe that he is a creature of some sort, whether it's an angel or some other type of creature that is, when we use the term creature, that is, he is a created being. And, right. Um, yeah, that position came from Bishop Arius, uh, actually. Uh, well, he's the one who popularized it. It was probably a little bit before with the Ebionites. But um, right. in the early church, they, they had to combat, you know, this, this heresy of teaching that Jesus was not an eternal God, but a created small letter G God. And, and um, and the, and the Watchtower Society promotes that a lot in their New World Translation, don't they, Bruce? Yes, they do. And 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 Brother Gus, what you've got to ask yourself right away is knowing that there is only one true God, according to uh, the Bible, there's only one real God, according to uh, John seventeen three, and other verses, Galatians four eight, there's only one God by nature. And and the, uh, I'm going to quote a scripture from the world, New World Translation. This means everlasting life. They're taking in knowledge of you, the only true God, and of the one whom you sent forth, Jesus Christ. Now you have to ask yourself, as I ask a uh, Jehovah's Witness or a person who was studying with Jehovah's Witness, I said, I said to him, now, is Jesus Christ a true God? Or a false god? Of course, he hesitated on this question, and he never did answer it. But that's the question that everyone has to ask themselves, or ask him or herself or herself. Is Jesus Christ a true god or a false god? Now, if he's a false god, he's not even worthy of our reverential respect. So that's a question everyone must ask. Is Jesus Christ a real god? Or a false god? And of course, the answer is he's a true god. So he's part of what we know as the deity of Christ, and he's part of the triunity of God. Okay, my brother, keep going. Amen. So, uh, yes, uh, this is the dilemma that a lot of Unitarians uh, have a problem with, and, uh, and, and, and this is really one of the critical areas, I think, or the critical, critical weaknesses of the Unitarian position. Like you said, it Either Jesus is uh, the true God or he is a false God. Now, Unitarians would say, well, um, angels are called God in the uh, in the Psalms, and 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 the uh, Jews were called gods, uh, according to John chapter, uh, I believe it's chapter nine. Right. Um, uh, and so uh, uh, the issue is uh, uh, there's a difference between being. God's Elohim and being called God Eloah or El. Amen. And, and, uh, and, and here's a critical but, point. Uh, the, the, Jesus goes on, the Bible goes on to say that all of them shall die. All of them right. shall die. Uh, false gods are going to die just like any other God. But Jesus Christ is alive forever. He's the one true God. 
along with his father. Now, I don't want leaders to, uh, readers or listeners to get confused. I want them to recognize that Jesus Christ is indeed God the Son. He has the very nature of his father. And that is very critical for anyone to recognize that Jesus Christ is, we are not saying that Jesus Christ is the Father. We are saying that he possesses the very uncreated nature of his Father. Matter of fact, in Genesis 126, it says the following, as you very well recognize, let us make man in our image. And if you notice, it says in our image, not images, Jesus right. has the very nature of the very essence, the very image of God himself. Now, the question might be asked, well, we're made in the image of God. But Colossians reveals, Colossians one fifteen and 16, it says, who is the image of the invisible God? He is the image. He wasn't created in the image of God. He is the image of the invisible God. Amen? I, I, I lo- amen. I, I love the fact that you brought out our which is a uh, which is really assumes a, a multiplicity of persons, and yet uses the term singular image. So the pronoun is our, uh, and yet that that assumes uh, more than one, and yet image is singular. And I think that absolutely, the literal. And actually, uh, I don't know a lot of Hebrew, but I know it uses a singular verb also. Let us make man in our image. Let us right. make man. In our image, it uses a singular verb. In other words, the unity of the Father and the Son. Amen. Amen, brother. So let, let, let's talk a little bit about this worshiping Jesus. The okay. That's... Yeah, the Washtenaw Society makes a big deal about proscaneo and obeisance. Right. Well, let, let, I, I just want to I just want to make the readers or the listeners I don't know why I'm saying readers, but listeners aware of the following uh, information that I have gathered from the New World Translation and comparing okay. it to other translations. This word proskuneo, which is the word for worship, every time it refers to God's Son. The New World Translation uses the word obeisance. In other words reverential respect but each time it talks about god knowing uh the indication that it is god it uses the word worship i'd like to give you a few instances of this right away matthew 2 2 where it says they are come to worship him that's the magi using god's sons it uses the word obeisance matthew 2 8 that i may come and worship him that's god's son obeisance matthew 2 11 fell down and worshipped him. I, I'm sorry, fell down and did obeisance to him. That's God's son. Right. Fall down and worship me. Who is this? They use the word worship for Satan. See, here's the thing. I'm going to say this again. Every time the word refers to God's son, they use the word obeisance, proscuneo. But when it comes down to God, and in this case, Matthew 4, 9, fall down and worship me. They changed the word obeisance to worship. Matthew 4, 10, what, what, what really, Jesus uh, said, what, pardon what me? really interesting that you pointed out that they translated it as worship in reference to Satan, yet they won't do the same for Jesus. That's right. That is just simply unheard of, that uh, they had enough audacity to change the word obeisance to worship, even when it came down to Satan, but Jesus can't get that, he, uh, according to the New World's translation. However, the 1961 edition of Hebrews 1.6 says, Let all of God's angels worship him. And this is a command from God himself. And God is commanding all the angels to worship his son. Later editions change the word Worship to obeisance. In other words, now Jesus uh, is getting reverential respect. However, it should be noted the following, uh, Brother Estacio. Um, if you really look into the Word of God, you will see that in Acts chapter uh, 10, verses, let me get these right verses here. 
uh, verses 25, 26, I'm looking at the verses, uh, we see that when Peter entered into the house of Cornelius, and Cornelius fell down and did obeisance to him, Peter said, get up, for I am too, am just a man. What am I getting at here? Religious obeisance equals worship. Right. Religious right. obeisance equals worship. So even when you try to hide the deity of Christ, remember this. Religious obeisance equals worship. Now, here's an instance right here. Here's an instance right here in Matthew chapter uh, 8, 1 through 3, in the New World Translation, began doing obeisance to him. Now, I'm going to ask you and the listeners a question. Uh, did Jesus say, get up? Jesus never said, get up, for I, too, am just a man. Why? Because this is religious in nature, and he knew he was more than a man. Christianity wow. teaches that Jesus Christ was 100% man and 100% God. In Mark 140, the same instance, the person bending his knee, this is talking about the leper. In Luke 5, verse 12 through 14, he fell on his face and begged Jesus. Jesus never said, get up, for I too am just a man. I'm going to take you back to Acts chapter 10, verses 25 and 26, where when Peter entered into the house of Cornelius, Cornelius bent down in obeisance, and Peter said, get up, for I too am just a man. Wow. Amen? Okay. Amen. All right, the ruler's daughter near death in Matthew chapter 9, verses 18 through 20. The New World Translation says began to do obeisance to him. Now, now get this picture now. This person is close to death. This is Jairus' daughter and began to do obeisance to him. Can you picture this scene that... They're only doing reverential respect to a man they feel can bring their daughter back from the throngs of death. Mm -hmm. It doesn't fit. So he, he, here's a key thought that the uh, the um, insight on the scriptures give. This is volume two, uh, page twelve eleven. For anyone who's listening, insight on the scriptures from the Watchtower. And Track Society, Volume Two, uh, verse uh, not vi I'm sorry, Volume Two, pages twelve, eleven. That's one, two, one, one. Here's what it says: Most Hebrew and Greek words that can denote worship can also be applied to acts other than worship. However, the context determines in what way the respective words are to be understood. Did you get that, Brother <laughs> Gus? That's the right. Context, That's the context determines what way. Now, what's the context of the ruler's daughter near death? She's near death. This is a supernatural act. And, and Jairus' daughter is near death, and he's requesting that Jesus bring her back from this state. Now, if that, if that context doesn't demand the word worship, as the average Bible will say, then I don't. I, I, I can't go any further with that. Can I get an amen, brother? Amen, brother. In fact, um, what you mentioned earlier really uh, really hits the nail in the coffin because if uh, Peter refuses to an act of obeisance from Cornelius, no doubt, then that act of obeisance was a was actually worship. It, was, it depends on so Proscaneo, even though they translated it as obeisance in an attempt to water it down as something other than worship, even with them using the term obeisance, it can denote acts of worship. Absolutely. Yeah. I, absolutely. I, I'm going to say this again, as you've already said, and I'm so glad you you caught on to that right away. Religious obeisance equals worship. And here's an interesting thing, uh, Brother Gus. In their 1971 
uh, excuse me, the Revised New World Translation of 1984. This is Second Chronicles 2018. Listen closely. At once Jehoshaphat bowed low with his face to the earth, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem themselves fell down before Jehovah to do obeisance to Jehovah. Wow. Here we have an instance of the word obeisance used in the sense of worship. Of course, wow. later on in the revised version, the 20. 2013 version, they have worship. So, once again, obeisance, religious obeisance, equals worship. So, uh, this is uh, this is just, you can change the words, but it still amounts to giving worship to the Son of God. And remember, the angel of the apocalypse in, in um, Revelation 19.10 and 22.9 said, don't do that. Don't do that. Worship God and Him alone. So what does that what does that tell you? That even the angels say, Don't worship me. But Jesus never refused religious obeisance. He never refused it. And don't forget that's the same word, proskuneo. All right. So so even the angel refuses proskuneo, um, even when they translate they translate it as worship then, but it's it's still the same word that they would use. It's the same okay. word. It's the same yeah. word. So right. here's here's another instance, uh, uh, brother. Uh, Jesus' disciples encounters pierced waters, and in Matthew four twenty two and two thirty three, those in the boat did obeisance to him. Now again, the context determines what how to use this word obeisance. So Jesus calms the storm. And they were much amazed with them themselves. The disciples became very fearful. Those in the boat did obeisance to him. Are you are are, are you uh, telling us that they only did reverential respect? No, they worshipped him. The context brings it up because immediately the waves and the wind ceased. Of course, this is more than reverential respect. And I'm sure the disciples thought about the Old Testament, where, especially in the book of Psalms, where God is the one who calms the sea, and God is the one who controls the wind and the waves. They had right. to think about that. So they asked themselves, what kind of man is this? Then even the winds and the, and the waves obey him. So again, context demands that it should be translated worship. However, bring it back. Obeisance, religious obeisance equals worship. And, and uh, was it? Oh, um, I think it's uh, Psalm one hundred seven twenty nine that makes that reference. And when Jesus fulfills, it says, "He stilled the storm to a whisper; the waves of the sea were hushed." Now Amen. That's, interesting. <laughs> that's interesting because that's exactly what Jesus did. He told the sea, he told the storm, "Hush, be quiet." Hush. That's what he said. In the actual Greek, I think you're, I think you're quite accurate there. He actually said, "Hush, be still," and yeah. and 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 the, and the and the Greek indicates that immediately it stopped, not gradually, but immediately it stopped. And that that is simply all inspiring. Of course, the disciples couldn't do anything but say, "What kind of man is this that even the wind and the seas obey him?" Now, here's Amen. an interesting quote from from uh, uh, Robert Bowman's book, Putting Jesus in His Place. And I, I would advise everyone to get this book. It is an awesome book, if you can. Falling Down Before a Being with Supernatural Power and Attributing to Him a Divine Status of Any Kind is by definition an act of worship. Let me say that again. Falling Down Before a Being with Supernatural Power and attributing to him a divine status of any kind is, by definition, an act of worship. Amen. I got another one for you. I don't know how long. How long is our interview, my brother? Because I don't want to overextend myself. Don't worry. We got plenty of time. Go ahead. Keep on. Okay. <laughs> All right. Don't get us going, right? <laughs> I, I <laughs> noticed another thing. I noticed another thing in their in their new um, New World Translation 
in Acts, uh, not Acts, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, and I'm going to turn to it. Give me a chance to turn to it. I have their 2001 edition. Um, excuse me. This is Hebrews to 1. Hold on, my brother. Uh, this book is not cooperating with me. It's brand, it's brand new, and that's why it's not cooperating. This is very interesting about the ages. Here it is. Um, verse 1 and 2. Long ago, God spoke to our forefathers by means of the prophets on many occasions and in many ways. Now, at the end of these days... He has spoken to us by means of a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he made the systems of things. Now, at the bottom, at the footnote, referring to verse 2, it says the ages. So in other words, it could read in verse 2, Now at the end of these days he has spoken to us by means of a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he made the ages. Now, you have to ask yourself a question. If Jesus Christ made the ages, he made time, doesn't that right. mean he's before time? Right, yeah. If he made the ages, he had yes. to be before time. And any any being before time is by definition Deity, God, because God is the only person who existed before time began. Even angels were made in time. Amen. There's nothing outside of time that could be called God. But within time, of course, it is a created thing. So if Jesus made the angels, uh, excuse me, if he made time, of course he made the angels too, doesn't that mean he's eternal? I did ask a person about that, and, of course, um, I didn't get any type of answer, but uh, it is so true. Jesus Christ made time. Time is a created element or whatever entity you want to uh, put it in. So um, he's eternal. Matter of fact, uh, we all know that he calls himself the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, in Revelation chapter 22 or uh, right right around in that area. Uh, here's another one. Demon possessed man or men. Uh, Mark chapter 5, verse 1 through 15. Uh, possessed, possessed did obeisance to Jesus, verse 6. Matthew says it this way. Demons entreat Jesus to go into the swine fell down before Jesus. Okay, so there you have an instance of obeisance again. Um, the man born blind, after being healed and recognizing that Jesus healed him, the former man did obeisance to him. Uh, I don't know how to say this. Sometimes I, I run short of words. Um, obeisance to Jesus, reverential respect. This man was born blind. And he's he is requesting Jesus to heal him, and Jesus does heal him, and all he gives Jesus is reverential respect. No, he worshipped him in the true sense of religious obeisance. So you can't really hide the deity of Christ if you really examine the scriptures. Um, the one of the uh, most potent areas, along with the ones I've said, is when Jesus rose from the rose from the grave and some doubted but others worshipped him um, the disciples worshipped him obviously they did more than do a reverential respect the whole New Testament hinges on the death the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ it's no way possible that the disciples just did obeisance to him remember he was three days in the grave. He rose from the grave bodily, and here they're looking at him. Some doubted, and the Bible says in Matthew 28, some doubted, and, and others worshipped him. So again, we have the word worship, or obeisance, meaning worship. Amen. Amen. Okay, my brother. Um, I don't have much more than that. 
I have a lot more than I could. Uh, I, 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 I'm contradicting myself in a sense. I have a lot more than I could say, but I th- think we covered quite a bit. Once again, uh, putting I'll Jesus what, in one, his one, one the I'm sorry, my brother. One of the passages I always use when um, Unitarians try to use the uh, terminology that others are called gods um, is the uniqueness of Christ. And and, and what I mean by this is that um, most Unitarians will, uh, uh, they they kind of like in their argument to say that Jesus is a god like any other god, like all the angels are called gods or like, Men who are righteous judges are called gods, or unrighteous judges are called gods, Elohim. I would say, well, so you're trying to say Jesus is just like any other old ordinary god, right? Small g god, right? right? <laughs> One of the passages I always point them to do this. So you don't really believe Jesus is unique at all, really. I mean, oh, no, 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 we're not trying to say that. I said, no, 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 but you are. I said, well, I'll right. tell you what. Look, let's go to Psalm chapter one oh uh Psalm eighty nine. And Psalm eighty nine, verse six says, and it uses the term Elohim, for who uh-huh. in the sky above can compare with Yahweh? It uses actually the tetragrammaton is there. Right. Who is like the Lord among the heavenly things or the gods? Elohim. Uh of course Amen. both of these questions are rhetorical questions. They're, they're actually saying you know, no one can be compared to Yahweh in the skies, and there is no one like him amongst the heavenly beings or amongst the gods, the Elohim. Amen. So if that's the case, if Jesus is just like any old ordinary Elohim, this this must definitely be a question that applies to him also. He cannot be compared to Yahweh. He cannot, he cannot be compared. Be compared. Right? And that... Amen. And, you know, to to capitalize on what you're saying, I'm going back to the book of Hebrews again, in chapter 1, where it says the following. You talked about who can be compared, and as you said, it's a rhetorical question. No one can be compared. And listen to this. He is the reflection, uh, chapter 1, verse 3. He is the reflection of God's glory. And the exact representation of his very being. Yes. And he sustains all things by the word of his power. And after he had made a purification for our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Now, uh, I'm going to I'm going to leave that for a moment because the whole book of Hebrews talks is could be called the better than book. He's better than Moses. He's better than the angels. He's better than the prophets. He's so much better. And in and here, uh, for example, it says, for example, to which of the angels did he ever say, "You are today, I you are my son. Today I have begotten you." And again, I will become his father, and he will become my son. But when he brings his firstborn into the, the inhabitant earth, now get this. Let all God's angels worship Him. That's that. That's that's the regular version. Of course, in the in in here, New World Translation, you have do obeisance to Him. All right. But getting back to here, He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact representation of His very being. No one could be the exact representation of God's very being but God Himself. And right. yet Jesus Jesus said it this way, I and my Father are one. And he uses right. a word there which means uh, not one in purpose. Well, the Jews could be one in purpose, but Jesus was using a word which indicated he was one in essence with the Father. And this is right. precisely why the Jews wanted to stone him. They knew what right. he was saying. And they thought he was committing blasphemy. And if you notice, Jesus didn't say, oh, no, you took me the wrong way. He didn't say that. He had to hide himself away from them because of their murderous intent. Amen. In fact, that, that, let's just really concentrate on what that means. The exact okay. representation of his very being. Now, the New American Standard Translation actually translates that as the imprint of his Nature. Substance. Yes, it's substance. Amen. Now, so now, 
what kind of substance or nature does God have? Is it finite or infinite? Well, it is quite obvious that it is infinite. Whatever God is, it is infinite in nature. And to say that Jesus Christ has the very nature of God himself places the Son of God in infinity. So, matter of so, fact, the word there, the word there, if I'm not mistaken, Brother Stasio, is the word hypostasis, which right. means the very, the word hypo, that's where we get our word under, and stasis means standing. So we're saying standing under, the very right. essence of God himself is stamped on the sun. Amen. So only the infinite can contain the infinite, and only the infinite can reflect the infinite. The Absolutely. The finite cannot reflect the infinite. The finite could never be infinite. No. And and, and and so the Psalm 89 6, when I think about that, what, what Psalm 89, this is why Psalm 89 6 says, it says that none of the heavenly beings is like God. Not, well, doesn't that not include the angels, oh, my brother? None of them. None of them. Not none even of them. Michael. <laughs> not even Michael, and, and and matter of fact, in Michael and and not in Michael, of course, no, but in Daniel ten thirteen, it says Michael is one of the chief angels. He's only one of. That's yeah. why so Jesus not Christ could not be Michael. He's not one of anything. He's unique. Yeah, he's the unique son of God. Go ahead, my brother. So that, brother Carter, so are you saying that Michael? Are you saying that Michael's not unique? <laughs> <laughs> Michael is not unique. He's one yeah. of the chief. He's one. Although he's used for for the guardianship of Israel, the people of Israel, he's not unique according to Daniel ten thirteen. But Michael, one of the chief angels, he's one. Even even, even though his own name means one who is like God, mm-hmm. he is still one of. He's, but he's one of. Yeah, he's Amen. in a category. He's he's in the category of other angels. He's yes. not you you know, and, and so uh you know, that really, really puts it in the picture and and when, and, and we go further into the book of Hebrews of what you just brought out. It says oh, okay. unto which unto which of the angels have I ever have I ever said I have begotten thee? He never said that. That's another rhetorical question. He never said exactly. that to any individual angel. He okay, never you, said you it. Gotta love, you got to love those rhetorical questions. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> they they are, they bring out they bring out the 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 singleness of our Lord right. and Savior Jesus Christ. That's what they do. It's it's, and, it's God. It's God's way of being sarcastic. That's what. It yes, is. it is. It's God's way. It's God's way of being sarcastic. Yeah. And you know, and you know, I'm I'm speaking about uh, the creation of angels. Colossians. Let me turn to it, my brother. Let me turn to it. Uh, right. This is uh, getting better and better as we go along here. Um, Colossians one fifteen and sixteen. I'm going to use their Bible, the New World Translation. Sure. Uh, listen to this. This is this is all this is all good. Um, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. We can get into that for a moment, but right now I'm going to go on. I'm, I'm going to repeat verse 15 again. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, because by means of him all other things were created in the heavens and on the earth, the things visible and the things invisible, whether they are thrones or lordships, let me pronounce that right, or lordships or governments or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Now, I want to capitalize on that after I read the next verse. And he is before all other things, and by means of him all other things were made to exist. Now, Verse 17, and he is before all other things. Okay, well, doesn't that indicate that if God created Jesus, which which is untrue, Jesus created time, 
which I already uh, reflected on, doesn't that mean he's before time? If if yeah. if he's before all other things, doesn't that mean he's before time? That puts him back in the, in the category of infinite once again. Right. But here here's another here's another key point. All things were created through him and for him. So, so the whole universe, the whole galaxy, was created for Jesus. Well, that's what it says. And and actually in in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 4, if I recall, all things were created for Yahweh, for Jehovah. So there we put it, Jesus is right back in that category again. Uh, Speaking of uh, what category am I talking about? That all may honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. All may honor the Son even as they honor the Father. That's putting him where he belongs. That is actually putting our Savior where he belongs. Now, I'm going to say it again in case something again. All things were created for him, which means Jesus. And that, and back in in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 4, I believe it is, you can check it. It might be verse 9. Mm-hmm. All things were created for God. So there you have it. Equality with God the Father. Amen. Amen, brother. So, well, so, I got some so more. Yes. I got some more in that. I got some more. Uh, I, uh, I'm going to give you an instance. Go ahead, I mean, brother. So then the, the Unitarian would assert then, or the Unitarian or, or the Jehovah Witness would assert then, basically, that everything was made for a creature. Oh, Just which is which is is actually, I don't even. I can't put words on that. Everything was made for a creature. No, everything was made for God, to right. glorify God. You know, matter right. of fact, I, somewhere in the book of Psalms it says we were made to glorify God. And right. here we put Jesus on the same, the Bible puts Jesus on the same pedestal as himself, as God the Father. Um, uh, before, uh, Brother Stasio, you and I talked about a very uh, potent verse uh, I met a man, and I'm not going to tell you where I met him, Matt, but I met him. He was out. Um, he was a Jehovah's Witness, and he was out uh, giving out these magazines. And I asked him, I, I was going to meet him more than once, and I asked him, would he would he consider uh, Revelation 5.13? I'm going to turn there. I'm going to turn to Revelation 5.13 and possibly verse 12. And um, I want you to consider these verses, even though you've read them many times. Okay, here we go. And I'm, I'm going to start with verse 11. And I saw and I heard the voice of many angels. Now get that. Many angels right. around the throne and the living creatures and the elders. And the number of them was myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands. And they were saying with a loud voice, The lamb who was slaughtered is worthy to receive the power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Now, verse 13. And I heard every creature in heaven. Now, did you get that, my brother? Every creature in heaven and on earth and underneath the earth and on the sea and all the things in them saying to the one sitting on earth. The throne, that's Yahweh, Jehovah God, and, that key word, and to the Lamb be the blessing and the honor and the glory and the might forever and ever. Now look at verse 14. The four living creatures were saying, oh man, and the elders fell down and worshipped. Who did they worship? They worshipped the one sitting on the throne and the Lamb. I was considering that honoring the Son even as we honor the Father. I think that's almost inescapable. Uh, The man who I did talk to uh, using his Bible, he came back the next week, and even though he saw it, he must have seen it because this is what he said. He says, we don't worship Jesus. So he saw it in his own Bible, but he he still denied it. He still denied it, he, but at least he saw it. He saw it, and praise God that he saw it. Nice man, but.
But nice people don't get saved. It's it's people who trust in Jesus Christ who get saved. You, you, you know what they say, right, Bruce? They say no. the Nile. Go ahead. The Nile was not just a river in Egypt, and so <laughs> I got. <laughs> yeah. I didn't catch so, up that until you said it. But yeah, say that again. That, the that, Nile was not just a river in Egypt. Yeah. He, oh, Denial. Okay. <laughs> that guy That's he pretty definitely, good. He definitely got a dose of Egyptian. So. <laughs> yeah, my brother. <laughs> Amen. Um, but you know what's interesting? You use that passage now. Uh, the word worship there is different from proskuneo, though, isn't it, Brother Carter? No, that 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 that's that's our word proskuneo. But I think you were thinking about Revelation chapter twenty-two, verse three, where the word uh, uh, where latre always used. And let's let's right. turn there. That's that's the word for sacred service. And let me turn right. to Revelation twenty-two, three. Um, again, that's the word used for sacred service. Right. Uh, hold on. I got all these indexes, uh, brother, but when I go to find them, <laughs> they seem to be missing. <laughs> and there will be no, uh, and there will no longer be any curse, but the throne of God. Notice that. Now notice this: the throne of God and of the Lamb. Didn't say thrones. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city. And his slave will offer him latreo, sacred service. It's hard to believe that the Son of God does not get the same sacred service, latreo, as God the Father, since they're both on one throne. And that's the word, as we said, latruo, some say latreo, latruo, sacred service. Once again, Jesus is getting the same worship, same sacred service, as his father. Amen. Amen. So that that word, uh, that sacred service or divine worship. Right. Or divine worship. Uh, yeah. Uh, applies to the son also. Yes, it does. It applies to the son also. A matter of fact, um, let me see if I can locate this. Um, in the book of Daniel, that word, latreo, is used for God alone. Now, there's a certain there's certain section of the book of Daniel. Uh, I think it's beginning in Daniel chapter two, uh, where the word the word latreo is the Aramaic palek, and I hope I'm not going too far with this. But it's the it's the Greek word it's the uh, Aramaic word palek, p e l a c h. I know some people pronounce it differently. However, that word is exclusively used for God. And yet, in Daniel chapter 7, verse 13, let me see if I can find it. Here here it is. Um, I kept on beholding the visions of the night, and see there, with the clouds of heaven, someone like the Son of Man happening to be coming, and to the Ancient of Days he came to ask, I can't hardly read this. This is so different. Let me start over. I kept on beholding in the visions of the night, and see there, with the clouds of, of the heavens, someone like the Son of Man, that's Jesus, happened to be coming. And to the Ancient of Days he came access, and they brought him up close even before that one. Now here it is. And to him, that is Jesus, there were given rulership and dignity and kingdom that the peoples, national groups, and languages should all latreo, serve even him. Talking about Jesus. The same word used in the book of Daniel for God the Father is used for Jesus, sacred service. It's hard to escape that Jesus was not worshipped, or at least prophesied as being worshipped at the end of the age. Right. Okay. As, uh, I think it was in uh, the book of Daniel which he made reference to at his night trial, wasn't it, when he said, and you shall see the Son of Man standing uh, in the clouds. Um, right. 
Right. Yeah. Uh, we all know that the Son of Man is, of course, Jesus Christ. And, but right. but look, but look, 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 look at his rulership. And to him that were given rulership and dignity and kingdom that the peoples, national groups, and language should all serve Latreo, Latreo, him. Right. So, Thanks. once again, uh, that word Latreo, I know I repeat myself, but I, I find myself doing that a lot, especially right. when I'm in front of a, a group uh, of, of church members or so on, or those who are listening, so they can write write it down and look it up for themselves. Right. Right. Uh, you can write it down. You can look it up. Uh, it's, it's the Aramaic word palak, P-E-L-A-C-H, and it's um, latreo, and it's a good word that describes the worship of God himself. Amen. So Amen. It's, it's interesting. It's translated serve, but it means, it means of course, worship uh, in the sense of uh, serving God. Okay, let, my brother? Let me invite some callers and see if they wanted to go ahead okay. and ask any questions or share any comments. If, if you have any uh, thoughts on your mind or concerning the subject of worship of Jesus in the New World Translation, uh, just go ahead and press 1. The number is 347-934-0379 or anything related on to the topic of the divinity of Christ and uh, the Watchtower Society and, and what it teaches about who Jesus is, what his capabilities are, or uh, anything concerning Christology, we'd be glad to go ahead and take your calls. In. Yes, we would. Or, or if you actually hold that position and want to um, present a text that you feel that um, you're having difficulty with or that you think that um, we may have difficulty with, please do share your questions or comments with us. We're just really open to go ahead and take any dialogues at this moment in the program. Oh, so once again, the number is 347934. 0379 if you're listening online and just press 1. If you're currently listening to the hotline, all you have to do is press 1 if you're, if you're listening by phone. So, uh, yeah, brother, I mean, uh, uh, once again, uh, you know, it's, it's a catcher's catch can with them. Uh, they, 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 you have a text right there in the book of Revelation which attributes Jesus with Latreo. You have also um, texts of Scripture where they themselves translated Jehovah receiving obeisance, which no doubt they're not going to say Jehovah's just receiving uh, some small respect. But it's actually worship. Absolutely. That, uh, if, to, if to repeat that, uh, that was Second Chronicles twenty eighteen, chapter twenty, verse eighteen. Yeah, Second Chronicles twenty eighteen. They translate the uh, Jehovah as receiving obeisance there. So, um, uh, so no doubt obeisance in that instance they would acknowledge means worship. Absolutely. Then you, then you also have the devil being attributed worship, actually. The word poskaneo at that moment is translated as worship, not obeisance. Um, mm. and, and where's that text where the devil is attributed worship, brother? In their translation? Uh, where the devil is attributed worship? Let me look. Uh, that, that was Matthew chapter 4, verse 9. Yes, Matthew 4, 9. And that's, and that's where Jesus, of course, uh, is I think taken into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. That's right. And and Satan asks, you know, Jesus to do an act to of fall down and worship him. Yeah, to bow down and proskuneo him, which they right. don't trans as obeisance, they translate it as worship there. So they have right. a conundrum here. They have a conundrum because they, they keep flip flopping and the only time that they're really, really sure about how to translate proskuneo is when it's directed at Jesus. The devil gets mm -hmm. more worship. Uh, Jehovah sometimes gets as much obeisance as Jesus, and Jesus never gets worshipped. Amen. <laughs> they're always using the same word in all of these instances. Even yes. Peter. That's 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 what the that's what the um, tragedy of this is to right. to not give us give Jesus uh, the the worship that he deserves. Uh, I'm so, going to give you one more before the listeners turn in. Sure. Um, how about Philippians chapter 2? Every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things underneath the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. That refers back to Isaiah 45, 23, where everyone is bowing to Yahweh. Yah uh, Yahweh. Uh, it's a parallel scripture, and Paul used it. 
So what do you think Paul thought about Jesus? Okay. Yeah, he, 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 thought, he thought of him as God, that's for sure. Amen. Yeah, I mean, because you, you have all of creation now uh, attributing honor and glory to a creature. Now, no. I mean... Uh, Come on, let's be realistic. Yeah, Yahweh, Yahweh in the book of Isaiah says he does not share his glory with no, no other. one. No, no none. one. And, and yet, yet here, since you mentioned that, um, John, I think it's John chapter, it's chapter 17 where he says, And now, Father, glorify me with the glory we had alongside before the world began. Yes. So here is we're talking about a shared glory before the creation of the world. Right. Is that is simply end. all. That is just simply all inspiring right there just to think about that. Amen, brother. So, you know, and, and this is so Jesus speaks of this shared glory, and yet Isaiah says that Yahweh doesn't share his glory. He doesn't so share his glory with anyone. So does he yeah, share his glory with a created being? Right. Yeah. Here's an amazing thing about that. This infinite being stepped down into time to save us. That's what's so amazing. Right. Mm-hmm. And, that, and, that, and you know what? That really, right there, what you just said right now, that's the bottom line as to why Jehovah's Witnesses hate Christmas. Right. Uh, and, and, and what I mean is uh, not, not the average Jehovah's Witness, because the average Jehovah's Witness was like myself. We, we would go through the mall. And you hear the Christmas songs, and you you wind up singing the tune. You know, you you couldn't help yourself. You know, right? I mean, and uh, so you you catch the spirit of Christmas, and then you beat yourself up for it. Um, uh, you know, because you're like, oh, I got I'm singing Christmas music, (laughs) and you're not really just you're not really truly disgusted with yourself. Right. You're just know that you've done something wrong against your organization because you actually thought it was kind of pleasant yeah at the time yeah <laughs> when yeah it's it's you feel guilty but in the end i don't know if it's in the end but you feel pleasant and you know yeah. I, I think about that scripture and they shall call his name emmanuel which means god with us Amen. You know, God God stepped into time in the person of the Son, Emmanuel. You know, and, this, uh, this this is this is the heart of the Christmas message. Actually, um, uh, you know, the Eastern Orthodox celebrate their Christmas on January sixth. You know, the twelve uh-huh. days of Christmas uh, mm-hmm. from December twenty fifth to January sixth for a reason. These are the two dates that early Christians believe Jesus was born. December twenty fifth. Right. January sixth. Well, guess what they call January sixth. They don't call it. Christmas. I don't know. I don't know this, brother. Go ahead, tell me. They call it Holy Theophany. Wow, Theophany. I think you better explain that to the audience, my brother. Uh, well, what is a know, Theophany? The word, yeah, the word Theophany means God appears. That's right. So God appears. Th- this is the Christmas message. Uh-huh. God appeared. In a man, yes. he appeared as a baby. He yes. appeared as Jesus Christ. And so, in the in the Orthodox, on January sixth, they celebrate God's appearance. In the West, we call it Three Kings Day, the day that the three kings came and uh-huh. and uh, and left their gifts. You know, at the, you know up there in in, uh, in Bethlehem, it's right? Funny because Bethlehem, Bethlehem means city of bread. Yes, it does. City of bread, and 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 so who is the bread from heaven? I didn't I didn't know if you were going to say that or not. Jesus yeah. said, "I am the bread of life." That's right. <laughs> wow, hey, man. it's it's amazing how the whole narrative comes together. The city is called House of Bread, City of Bread. Right. Jesus House is of the bread. bread of heaven that came down to feed us everlasting bread. Wow. Bread that, of course, that we partake every Sunday or every other Sunday, whatever, whatever, however, however you do it. Yeah. yeah. So every time we have communion, we have Jesus' bread. We have this bread, and we have his, this wine or juice that represents his blood. Right. So it, it is his theophany. It is yes. God appearing 
for 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 is God appearing in bread and wine and and ordinary things. God appearing in a body. And a you body. Know, that's right. The body of, of of the Savior Jesus Christ. The Book of Hebrews says that that God came down that that He dwelt in a body. He, he made yes. Himself in, that, it says a body you have prepared for me. Right. Who prepared oh, the body of Jesus? God himself. Yes, yes. Wow. And so in a body, in mortal flesh, we got to touch, feel, and taste God. And Amen. God incarnated himself. He was the theophany on Christmas Day, whether it's December 25th or January 6th. Either one, it doesn't matter. But the it doesn't matter. That we, the, the message of Christmas is, is the gifts that we, we often exchange is, is the fact that Jesus is the eternal gift. Amen. That, this, is, this is Christmas. This is, Chris, this is why Jesus, who he is, is important. Because, you know, I don't think any creature, any creature deserves all of the glory and honor and worship that if Jesus was a creature, then he doesn't deserve any of this. He doesn't deserve Say that anything. last thing again. If Jesus was a creature, then he doesn't deserve any of this. No, he doesn't. No creature. He doesn't. He doesn't. How, he doesn't deserve any of this. I, I, always, the, I always say, I always say, the, the 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 drop from the creator to the creature is is just as much of a drop from humanity to the insignificant ant that we may accidentally step on every day. Absolutely. That's, Absolutely. that's how, how high God is compared to us. Yes. Yes. And, and if we're going to say that an ant deserves the honor and glory as the human being, <laughs> you're badly mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't so care how mistaken. high you hold that little ant up. He's never going to be a human being. Amen. You can hold that ant up high and say, awesome is this ant. He will never be as awesome as a human being. Uh, you know, you, you hit on a very important p- point, my brother. The Bible says that man was the only being created in the image of God. No other being is created in the image of God. Only man, mankind. So you can't raise anything up higher than mankind, and I'm just comparing that to what you can't say. You can't raise an ant up to the the level of mankind. It can't be done. No. The the most that God has ever done for humanity was this. God says, I'm going to live inside of you. Oh, boy. Now, isn't that awesome? Now you talk about it, it, it says we receive what well, Galatians four six. You know what it says. Go ahead, tell them, Bruce. <laughs> what does praise Galatians God? Four? We receive Amen. the spirit of who? The spirit, the spirit of, of Christ. God's the spirit Christ. of God. Son. The spirit of Christ. And yeah. and um, Romans chapter eight says it. Let me let me say that because this is this is awesome, my brother. In Romans chapter eight, it inter it interchanges between the spirit of God and the spirit of Christ. In Romans chapter eight, I'm turning to it now so people won't think I'm making this up. Romans um, eight fifteen. Uh, Romans chapter eight. Verse uh, fifteen. Uh, oh, you you got it already. That's great. Uh, here it is. Um, However, this is verse 9, however, you are in, I'm reading from the New World Translation, however, you are in harmony, not with the flesh, but with the spirit, if God's spirit dwells in you, but if anyone does not have Christ's spirit, it does not belong to him. You see that? An interchange between God's spirit and Christ's spirit. Isn't that wonderful? Praise God. Now here's 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 an amazing thing. Um if now the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you. There you got it. Spirit of uh, raised up Jesus from the dead. Now we're talking about the Holy Spirit. He that raised up Christ from the dead will also make your mortal bodies alive through his spirit that resides in you. So we have God the Father, the Son, and then we have the Holy Spirit. 
I, you draw your own conclusions from that, but that's it's 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 amazing that God's spirit dwells within every born again Christian. It's simply awesome. Yeah. And notice it says your mortal body. We're going to rise physically from the grave, just like Jesus did. Jesus is not a he's not a spirit. He's he's a, he's he has a body of flesh and bones, as right. as he indicated. And Colossians two nine says this: In Him dwells. That's right now all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. There's a there's a there's a man in heaven, a supernatural man in heaven, who forever identifies himself with mankind. Let me repeat that verse: Colossians two nine. In Him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Also Amen. verse. Amen. I better let your callers call in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, let me go ahead and let them know again. Uh, if okay. you want to share any questions or comments, just uh, press 1 if you're listening by phone. Uh, the number is 347-934-0379. We're discussing the uh, New World Translation and its um, rendering of the word proskuneo, which is uh, most translators translate worship across the board, but they choose to translate it as obeisance only in reference to Jesus, you know, exclusively. Um, and they play fast and loose with obeisance and worship with other, with other, you know, people that it makes uh-huh. reference to. For example, the devil is attributed worship, even though it's the same Greek word. And, and even Jehovah is, is said to have obeisance in the book of Chronicles, but it's uh, no doubt a reference to its, uh, Religious worship when they use mm-hmm. the term of it. Yes. Then uh, Peter receives obeisance, and he rejects he rejects it because yes, he, he recognizes does. he recognizes it as religious worship, even though the word obeisance is used in the New World Translation. It goes another thing, Brother Carter. Uh, in the large print reference Bible that the Jehovah which I have used, right here, yeah, their study Bible. It's funny is in Hebrews chapter one verse four when it says that all the angels do obeisance to him. There's a footnote there. and You want me to read that footnote? Yes, please read I, that footnote. <laughs> I know where you're going because I've seen that footnote and I was simply um, flabbergasted uh, that uh, that footnote was so awesome. Hold on. That footnote at the, the bottom reads as follows. And this is referring to Hebrews 1 6. I'm going to read the verse itself and then read it. But when he again brings his firstborn into the inhabited earth, he says, Let all God's angels do obeisance to him. Now, in reference to obeisance, at the footnote it says, Or worship. And guess what word he uses? Proskuneo. Amen. In the Latin, Amen. it's adorant. But in, in, the, in the Greek, it's proskuneo. The word worship. Let me read it You'll again. Start. And let all God's angels do obeisance to him. Footnote says, let all God's angels worship him. You know, Brother Carter, I, I always wonder, what makes them do something like that? I mean, it's a dead giveaway. Uh, yeah, well, well, you know, I, I think uh, 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 my best answer to that is this. When you don't have the Spirit of God, you're going to create blunders like this, uh, and even though you're trying to hide the deity of Christ, you're going to create blunders because the scriptures stand out for themselves. So you can interpret scripture for scripture. They stand out for themselves. And if you're going to try to hide the deity of Christ, it's going to come through anyhow. It's going to come through. And and I yeah. think the idea is to demean our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to put him in the category of a creature, but it comes out anyhow, uh, because um, that's the way I, that's that's my answer to your question. That's the only yeah, thing I, I can I, think I, of. I, I, I have to agree with you. I think whenever you're going to go ahead and try to contort or change the meaning of the Word of God, that... Uh, that there's some type of divine intervention there uh, causing errors. And, and, and some of those are self-inflicted wounds, of course. That is that they 
like you said, they lack the spirit of God, and so they make they have blunders. I think the other half is that simply God is going to intervene, and He's going to make sure that His word is going to shine through no matter what. Amen. Do you and know? So, do you know, Brother Gospel? Have actually, uh, I know, I know personally, at least two or three people who uh, read the, the New World Translation and they still got saved. Because well, I'm one of them. I'm actually one of them. Oh, I, that's right. You're one of them. Uh, um, and I think yours was in the book of Revelation. Uh, I forgot what it was, but it was something having to do with Jesus. But uh, right. um, you want to tell us what it was, brother? Uh, well, I'll tell you. It was, uh, it was in the book of Revelation. And uh, let me go ahead and get my New World Translation. Okay. So, and so I can go ahead and read exactly what I read. Revelation chapter 1. Okay. And I had woke up. Uh, this was actually late at night. I was, uh, And uh, this was like the last day that the Lord was revealing himself to me. Uh-huh. And in this Revelation, if you just read, and um, let's just begin with uh, 7 and 8, okay? Chapter 1. Chapter 1 of Revelation, in their translation, mm-hmm. says, Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every, every eye will see him, and those who pierce him, all the tribes of the earth, themselves in grief because of him. Yes, amen. Then it says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says Jehovah God. Who's speaking? Jehovah God, right? Okay, right. Jehovah God, they says. The one right. who, is, who was and who is coming, the Almighty. And goes on, I, John, your brother, and a share with you in the tribulation and kingdom and endurance in company with Jesus, came to be in the lake that is called Patmos, in the, in the isle that is called Patmos, was speaking uh-huh. about God and bearing witness to Jesus. By inspiration, I came to be in the Lord's day. We know that Jehovah was speaking to him. Right. And I heard behind me a strong voice like that of a trumpet. Who was, the, who was the strong voice that was that was that of a trumpet? It was Jehovah, verse 8. Right. It says, saying, what you see, write in the scroll and send it to the seven congregations, in Ephesus and in Smyrna and in Pergamum and in Thyatira and Sardis and Philadelphia and Laodicea. And I, uh-huh. turn, I turned to see the voice that was speaking with me. And as wow. I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the land stands someone like a son of man clothed wow. in a garment. So Jehovah, who was speaking to John, he turns to that voice now, and he sees the son of man, who is wow. Jesus Christ. And note, note what he says. Jesus says, Jesus says, uh, and in the midst of the land stands someone like a son of man clothed with the garment that reached down to his feet and girded at the breast with a golden girdle. Moreover, his head and his hair were white as white, white as wool. As snow, and his eyes as a fiery flame, and his feet were like the copper, and glowing in a ter- furnace, and his voice was as the sound of many waters. Now, who had the sound of many waters before? It was Jehovah. Right. <laughs> and he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth, and he goes on to say that uh, I am, of course, the first and last, in verse 17, and then right. in verse 18, the living one, I think right. he dead. Of time, living forever and ever, and I have the keys of death and of Hades. So, Amen. when Who's I read that, that yeah, I, I read it was Jehovah speaking. He's the Alpha and Omega. He has the voice of sounds of many waters. And John turns to this voice and he turns the voice so he could take take a look at what was talking to him behind him. He, he heard it was Jehovah according to their translation. Now, right? He turns around and he sees Jesus. Well, the Son of Man, I, verse thirteen, yeah. and I couldn't, I could not explain it. I knew of, I knew of the doctrine of the Trinity. I might have been a little more modalistic at the time. That was, uh-huh. you, know, you know, you know, Jesus was God. I couldn't explain it, uh, and uh, and so uh, my wife comes out and I'm booing like a, a baby on the floor. <laughs> 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 And uh, and, I, and this has actually been a process of two dawns and one late night, and right. uh, that the Lord is waking me up in the early morning, reading the Bible, the New World Translation, by the way, and um, 
and that night, and then I turned, you know, and my my wife, and I'm crying, and I gave my life to the Lord right there on the, on the floor. Wow. And she and she says she says, uh, so what's what's the problem now? And I said, Jesus is Jehovah. I can't explain it. <laughs> that just, that just, I <laughs> and she says, Oh, you'll believe anything. And she closed, slammed the door. <laughs> Because, because actually, my words were on Sunday when I told her. Uh, I told her. I told her. I said, "There's one thing I would never believe is the Trinity," and uh, uh-huh. and and three days later, I'm believing Jesus is Jehovah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I didn't equate that with the Father. I just knew that He was God. I right, knew right, right. Right, you, you didn't know enough to equate that with the Father. You just knew He was God. Right, you know, that's well, Amen. Yeah, that is so awesome. That, you, and the more you read your Bible, those things become clearer and clearer. Because the yeah, you they know. just the, the angel of the Lord in in the Old Testament equated with uh, uh, Jehovah, and uh, there's just so many references throughout the whole Bible of theophanies and whatever else one has. So uh, how about your how about your listeners? Uh, we're down to the last 10 minutes, so if anybody Oh, really? Wants, yeah, just uh, speak now or forever. I'll tell you, we've gone through almost an hour and a half just that fast. I didn't um, know that. Yeah, it called, hey, I'll tell you, time goes by fast when, you, when, when you're when having, having fun. You're having fun. Yeah. Amen. Uh, just let everybody know the number is three four seven nine three four zero three seven nine. Just press one if there's something that you want to share, a comment, a question. Maybe uh, maybe you hold to the position that Jesus is Michael the Archangel or, or uh, something else, and uh, you want to stump Brother Carter or myself, or you just uh, want to share why you believe what you believe. We're open to listen. Um, Amen. So Nine minutes left. Uh, nobody says anything no time soon. We're going to pretty much close the show up. But uh, I do want to remind everyone, uh, first of all, I want to thank Brother Carter for coming on to the program. You're quite welcome. Thank you so much. And um, and this was really, really, I mean, packed full of food. <laughs> this, this, this was yes. A, this was a meaty hour and 20 minutes. Amen, so, my brother. Uh, and so uh, the, uh, there goes somebody popped on right there. Uh, yes, you're on the air, 732. I'm on the air? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I just wanted to know, um, how did you guys come up with, uh, well, I should say the Watchtower, uh, come with uh, Michael Dark Angel and uh, right now you're saying, Gus, you're saying right now that Jehovah and Jesus are the same. Like now oh, I'm going to put Joe Wicks. Just let you know. <laughs> oh, you're Joe Wicks? My, my name is JK, so. <laughs> okay. okay, well, um, we would say that the name Jehovah can apply to God however he manifests himself. Uh, for example, um, Jesus, the name Jesus actually means Yahweh is salvation. Mm-hmm. Um, and in John seventeen eleven, and I think Brother Carter, I think let's turn that. I, I, I have a sure, I'll turn there. Go ahead, John chapter seventeen, I think verse eleven. Jesus says that the Father. Are we using the new new World Trade Nation the, the, their Bible or? Yeah, I'm using the New Yes, I am. Okay, all right. Yeah. Yeah, John chapter seventeen. John chapter seventeen. Okay, I'm going to read it. Also, I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, watch over them on account of your name, which you have given me, in order that they may be one, just as we are. All right. So so the name of God, Yahweh or Jehovah, is a name that is given to Jesus. That is that he can carry that name. Um, and the reason why he can carry that name is because what that name means, of course, is uh, the self-existent one, the name He Who Becomes. That is, uh, the Lord is, is eternal. That's what the name means. Yahweh means uh, I am that I am. It is, it is the ego in me. It means that God is the eternal being, that He is the uncaused cause. That name 
means that he is the creator and not the created. And so Jesus can carry that name because he also carries the nature of that name. Now, it doesn't mean that we don't, when, when we say Jesus is Jehovah, we're not saying Jesus is the Father. That's an instant equation. Right, we're not saying that. Okay. Um, uh, Charles says Here's Russell another one you might want to consider. Uh, in John chapter 8, verse 58, when Jesus said, Before Abraham was, I am, he uses that phrase, ego emi. And uh, that means uh, before Abraham even came into existence, I am. And that same term is used when uh, when Moses asked uh, God, "Who shall I say sent me?" And 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 and, and Yahweh replies, "I am, a go at me. I am that I am." Same word. Of course, it's in a in the Hebrew, but the Greek translation of that is a go at me, as at least part of that word. Yeah. So, like once so, again, I'd like so, to stress this. Jesus, I don't. Uh, a lot of people feel that Christianity, true Christianity, teaches that Jesus Christ is one with the Father, one right. in essence. Not he is not the Father. Matter of fact, the Book of Hebrews says uh, he is the exact representation of his very being. Jesus has the very being the exact being of God Himself, right? And, and as Psalm points out, uh, who, Psalm eight, uh, Psalm eight, who is like me? It's a rhetorical question, but He's saying, "There's no one like me. Nobody, there's yeah. no one like. There's no one like me." And the only person who could be like God is God Himself. Uh, for example, um, uh, um, I have, I'm a father, and I have right. a son, but my son is not a dog. Okay, so right. he, has a, he has a human nature. I don't produce dogs, and I don't produce cats, and I don't produce elephants. I only right. produce Amen. human beings. And so when, when God produces, or that is, or when God, uh, uh, when something comes from God, it also is God. That that thing is God. Be God. And in this sense, mm -hmm. and what makes God distinct or different from everything else is his eternal nature. Right. God is uncreated. And so uh, when we talk about Jesus um, coming into the world, we're not saying that he came into existence, actually, that uh, he was born, that is like a kind of like a woman gives birth to a child. Uh, in fact, it's the term monogenes, theos, means uh, only born or only unique. Um, yes. And so... Uh, a baby that exists inside a woman still exists inside a woman. Yeah. It's a baby, it's still there. Um, it's still a person. The only difference is in birth is the baby is a person now that was inside the person, uh, inside another person, and now that person exists outside of that person. And so when uh, the Bible talks about Jesus, and this is a a uh, text of scripture witnesses love to use Proverbs 8.22. When it talks about wisdom being produced, um, they negate that. In verse 22, it says wisdom is produced, but also in verse 23, it says something else about wisdom. It says that wisdom is from everlasting. Right. Uh, so um, uh, the fact is produced then must mean something other than being created. It means something to do with birth. Because when wisdom produces, and we're, we're using the term wisdom now again, uh, wisdom is only produced when it is implemented. For example, I could have wisdom, but it won't become activated until I use that wisdom. Right. Uh, I could know how to build a building, and I have the wisdom to build a building, but that wisdom only becomes active or generated or utilized when I actually implement that wisdom. So in this sense, Jesus existed with God as wisdom. He always existed as God's wisdom. He was always within, the Bible says, the Godhead, which um, in the uh, New World Translation they translated as divine quality, but is actually divinity. Right. Um, okay. uh, or Godhead, or Godhead, the Autokos. Um, yeah. <laughs> 
people, uh, this idea of of God producing is not actually creating. When he when when he produces Jesus, his son, he is that. externalizing him. He is implementing him. Uh, so he was inside, and now he is being implemented by being activated as wisdom. And how does God activate his wisdom? By using I use his word. And what right. is Jesus called? He's called the word. The word. The word. The word. Right. Yeah. Are you a Christian, my brother? You sound like it. No, I'm a, uh, actually, I'm a former, uh, I said I'm a former dual witness. I just, yeah. Oh, you're a former Jehovah's Witness. Okay. I like to call myself a former Jehovah's Witness. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's just the way after I learned about the UN and some stuff after discovering the Internet, I was so Okay. Going away by that, you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> praise God. I, 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 I would, I would always say, you know, really just read the book of John and don't concentrate. Yes. Don't concentrate so much on verse one. I mean, that that can be a little confusing. Yeah, I kind of use that too. It next blew me away too, but I was like, okay. <laughs> but uh, I think <laughs> there are definite scriptures that really show that Jesus is categorically not in the category of made things. And the so scripture he's, that he's I love, the mediator, oh. mediator of us, not not the watchtower. Right? So that's right. just to make it clear. <laughs> yeah, sure. He he is the mediator. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I, he's the mediator you know between makes, God and man. I was always think that, that through them, that's how you be get salvation and stuff like that. I just mm-hmm. thought that was kind of weird. I that never clicked with me, you know. The how long have you been out? How long have you been out, brother? Uh, I've been out since what four years. Four years, okay. Yeah. What made you come out? It's yeah, the, 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 the you know the lies. Uh, when I searched the UN and me discovering that there's missing scriptures in the Bible that they okay, think, and I you know I used to like give talks and stuff like that. And it, you know, I didn't I understand the last. You you said the you start reading the Bible. Is that what you were saying? No, or like different scriptures we're scripture, pointing out? The missing scriptures that's in the Bible that, that they don't, you know, there's been some missing scriptures that they don't, like, uh, they're putting words in and taking words out. That, that's the thing, that kind of... Yeah. You know. oh, well, do you do you know... Uh, do you know... I'm not going to ask you your name. Do you know about them? Uh, all other things were created by him. That word, other's not in there. Did you know that? In Colossians... The word "others" not in there. It's indicating that all things were created by Jesus. All things. Okay. Yeah. That, that that the see their translation in Colossians one fifteen and sixteen says all other things were created by him and for him. But there's no other in there. It's all things were created by Jesus. All things were created, oh. not all other things. That word is not in any manuscript. They put it in there to try to make Jesus a created being. Right. Okay. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. <laughs> well, you know. Okay. If, yeah. you, if you'll notice, brother, if you look at, I'm going to call you a brother. If you notice, if you look in their other translations, they have that word in brackets because it's not in the Greek. But in their latest translation, the 2013, they took the brackets out to make it seem like it's a part of the scripture, and it isn't. That's in the a new silver sword, they call it, and really a gray sword. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. well, that's something for you to take a look at. Something okay. for you to take a look at. I think Brother Stasio really told you a, a really good thing. Read the book of John. Re- just read it. And ask and ask God to uh like he does to all of us, uh help us help you to understand it and he will. He'll come through. I I will say this. Notice the reactions to everything Jesus says when he says it. Mm-hmm. That the writer makes it very clear to show the reactions to everything he says. And I think when you notice the reactions, you'll see that the reactions are shocking for a reason. And you'll see that, you know, the accusations... Yeah, that'll come very clear. Yeah, but, yeah let, me, let me put it this way. The Pharisees and Sadducees believed Jesus was claiming to be God. The Romans believed he was claiming to be God. 
and those were justified uh, arguments against him. And uh, and there was a reason why they were making those claims. And if, if you read the book of John, you'll see the reactions. Right. And, and the reactions will tell you why. Now, see, the thing is, a lot of things don't translate to us nowadays. You know, when we read the term son, we don't think uh, deity. But then again, 50 years ago, when people used to say, I'm gay, they were just really happy and they want to go party. So, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, now when, if somebody says, I'm gay, you know, we think they want to have sex with the same uh, gender. Ah. So, it just, so, so remember that the Bible is written in a language with a different culture at a different time, and the way to see see through all of the, the, the differences and nuances of the culture and time is to notice the reactions to what he says. And the awesome. reactions are you volumes. I never thought of that, Brother Stasio. That's very good. And where do uh, Satan come in and involved? Like, he went after, like, Jesus. So, like, if he's God, you know, you know, you, know, you can't kill God. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I uh, didn't understand him, Brother Gus. So what did, what did he say? You think you can't kill God? Well, no, he, uh, uh, Satan. That's what I'm trying to say. Satan came after him, but like, right. you need to know that you can't kill God. <laughs> Just wondering. Well, the yeah. thing is that um, it it all depends on what you view death is. Now, that's that's another thing. See, as a, as a Jehovah's Witness, Jehovah's Witness believe death is cessation. That when you die, you're just simply dead. Right. Um, right. But, right. but but if if death is the Christian understanding, which is merely a separation of your body from your soul or spirit, then if God becomes a man, he can die. It doesn't mean that he ceases to exist. Uh, let me give oh. you an example. Okay. Let me give you an example. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus used this term. And this really proves that death doesn't mean what Jehovah's Witnesses mean or the atheists mean what it is. Because that's really an atheistic terminology that Jehovah's Witnesses impose upon the term death. Uh, you have hundreds of other religions that believe Death is not cessation that there is an afterlife. Jesus said, Jesus said, he said, he says, he says, beware of those who can only kill the body, but not kill the soul. Now, why does he say that? Because humans can only kill the body. That is, they can only bring biological death. They cannot bring spiritual death because... Even though they kill your body, your spirit continues to exist. The, the difference is your spirit either continues to exist in life or in damnation. And mm. Jesus makes it clear. He says that there will be a resurrection of the righteous to bliss and a resurrection of the unrighteous to judgment. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's so much... There's so much now, like, uh, that... Hey, I'm, has, I keep on learning, so I'm trying to, you know... <laughs> well, you, 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 you take your time, brother. And yeah, God will teach you. As, yeah. yeah. The thing is, there's so much that we have to unwind as witnesses, because the witnesses actually have a completely different view of death. They have a completely different view of who Jesus is, and it's all adopted from the Adventists. Because, see, um, Charles Taze Russell... He hung around George Stores, who was an Adventist, and Nelson Barber. Yeah, Nelson Barber, and who was an Adventist, and a man who was uh, Jonas Wendell, who was a second Adventist in Millerite. And so, when you learn a little bit about what the Adventists teach, and I've had, if you, if you go in the archives here on this program here, Healing XL, when you go in the archives. <laughs> you will hear testimonies of people that were Adventists also. And the reason why I have Adventists on here is because sometimes a witness will hear an Adventist, and, but they won't listen to a testimony of another witness. So if they hear hmm. an Adventist, they're going to be like, hmm, boy, that sounds a lot similar to us and what we believe. And that's what we teach, you know. <clears throat> and uh, the Adventists have some similar beliefs, but some different beliefs. But once again, Russell was just a plagiarist. He plagiarized a lot of his beliefs and teachings. Yeah, he did. Yeah. So he borrowed, he borrowed from the Adventists and he borrowed from the Christadelphians. Don't don't give him too much, my brother. 
Let, oh, yeah. let him let, yeah. let 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 him Gus, let him just let let the Holy Spirit open his eyes to the reality of the Son of Man, the Son of God. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, just just read the read the Gospel of John, and um, and that's something that no um, Jehovah Witness will tell you that reading the Bible alone can lead you to God. But reading yeah, the Bible alone, because I, I know <laughs> when I was a witness, I never really got to read the Bible, so. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I think, most, I think most witnesses are like that. I, I remember some sister, some guy came up to your head, you read the whole Bible, and they're like, no, like, how can you tell me about the Bible? Then? So, okay. get, get, a, get a comparative, <laughs> get a, get a, uh, a comparative translation uh, of uh, New Testament. Um, we got a 914, you're on the air. Uh, Bruce? Yes. Guess who? I don't know who. Okay, I'll give you a hint. Uh, up on the mountain. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Bruce? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, John, is this John? That's it. Yep. Oh, boy, John. How you doing? Okay, I'm doing fine. You know, just sitting here listening to you. you know, okay. And, okay, and, well, that was it. Um okay, This that's... is John. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, ca- I caught your voice. I call your voice. <laughs> I know mo- uh, most people do. I have. I think I have a, a you know, a, an odd voice. And uh, well, it, John Anglais, if I right. can pronounce and, and it right. Now, yeah. now, remember, if you ever see me, don't you call me brother. Call me cousin. <laughs> well, I want you to be my brother. <laughs> well, well, let me get going, and um, I'll see you next year. Same place, yeah, when, same time. When is it next year, John? Uh, excuse me? When is it? September what? No, it's in October. Uh, oh, is it October? I think it's yes, yeah, it's the second uh, week in October. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, so take care and let me get going, okay? All right. All right, John. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. You still uh, there? Um, that was brother yeah. that was a brother that uh I'm just going to I don't care if he hears me or not. We want him to get saved. He's not saved yet. But I hope yeah. he will get saved. I, if but you hear me, John, I'm still hoping you get saved. <laughs> All right. But yeah, John's a great guy. He, he comes to. Uh, oh, you know John in Grace? Yeah, yeah, I know John. Yeah, John. Yeah, of course you John, do. Yeah, he, he he comes to the con- he's been coming to the convention since the Setner days. Right. Yeah, My wife is talking time. to me about something. Hold on. Uh, yeah, just uh, Paulie, you're still on the air. I just, I just want you to know also. There's, okay. There's, a, there's actually there's a there's a convention that that is held in Pennsylvania every year in October, and um, there it deals with a lot of the uh, news and doctrine that Jehovah's Witnesses believe in a kind fashion, and uh, it's called the Witnesses Now for Jesus Convention, and it's held at uh-huh. Blue Ringle, Pennsylvania. So. Um, but um, check check out on um, YouTube. It's called uh, WNFJ 2008. I think is the YouTube page, and you'll see Bruce Carter there. He, he has uh, some talks there. Um, you'll see me there. You'll see a lot of other people sharing uh, their testimonies and and teachings on the Jehovah's Witnesses and and the difference between mainstream Christianity and what the Jehovah's Witnesses teach. Amen. And, uh, Thank you. WNFJ 2008. You're welcome. I, I don't know your name, but I'll be praying that it's, it's, uh, the Lord will, 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 will Joe K, work in Joe your K. life mightily. Um, I'll be calling up here again. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, just God. check out the archives. Check out the archives. You'll you'll get to hear a lot of people um, share their testimonies and from different other, you know, not just the witnesses, but there are, there are other different groups. Mormons, right? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, thank you for calling in. Yeah, All righty, well, uh, Unless anybody else is going to press one, we just going to go ahead and uh, close this out. We've gone over the 90 minutes, and and uh, it normally closes up the lines uh-huh. uh, and try to call in. But um, you know, everybody who's on the switchboard gets uh, still press one. But um, okay, I don't see anybody press one. So uh, uh, once again, thank you, Bruce, for coming on. You're uh, welcome, brother. Know. Yeah, thank you, brother. It, it was it was great having you on. It was again. awesome. Yeah, and. Uh, um, uh, we'll see you next week, everyone. We're going to have a debate at 2 o'clock, and it will be on uh, salvation by faith or of works. 
uh, Catholic apologist William Albrecht against a uh, Turretin fan from uh, James White's Alpha and Omega Ministries. It's going to be a good debate. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah, we, we and we do a very, it's not a uh, heated debate, it's professionally moderated. We have two seven-minute openings, two five-minute rebuttals, six six-minute cross-exams, and two seven-minute closings. And then we open up the lines for 20 minutes for people to ask questions. So, Amen. So, I hope to moderate. hear that. Yeah, collegiate level professional debate, and and we actually have some actually good news. Uh, March fifth this year, we just got a debate with Dan Barker, and if you don't know who Dan Barker is, he is one of the leading atheist apologists in the world today. Okay. And so uh, yeah, we're gonna have a debate with Dan Barker against William Albridge on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So that's going to be really, wow. really cool. March fifth, March fifth, and it's going to be March fifth. Uh, yeah, March fifth. Okay, we haven't gotten the time down. That we're just in time for Easter. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so yeah, so uh, we have a debate next week, and then on the last week, December twenty sixth, everyone gets to see me on two venues uh, during this program. So uh, we'll widen out the uh, the listenership. So thank you, Bruce. Uh, thank You're you, everyone. You're my brother. Thank and uh, uh, just tune in on iTunes or go to our archives at www.blogtalkradio.com backslash healing x outreach. You all have a blessed week, and keep praying for Job's witnesses. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.